Hey, hey, hey guys. Whoa, hey guys, Ryan Foz Elite Pigeon Auctions. Yeah, my hair's all messed up. Why? It's windy, it's blowing, it's cool, but boy, it's sunny. Good afternoon, guys. I am Ryan Feathers, Elite Pigeon Auctions. Yes, we are here in Belgium. You're getting a special treat today. You're going to see, uh, you're going to meet uh, another pigeon family that's 100% into pigeons. They're like crazy into pigeons. They, they're so crazy, they're still writing a paper on pigeons, guys. And he, it's, it, it's still going good. I will show you. You have to just, everyone come on, on, on board. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, this show works the very best. When you guys participate, that's right. What does participation mean? It's not just white, not just liking. It's not sub just subscribing. It's participating. Ask some questions. Real pigeon family, big pigeon family, Dutch, Dutch bred, born, but playing pigeons now in Belgium. Yes. Super. I'm gonna rotate this camera and introduce you to the man, Michael Peevler. It's nice to see you on. Hold on. Who are we talking about? Let me just bring this up. Oh, you see my face there, guys. This is not me. I'm not the superstar of this one. Here he is. Oops, I zoomed in on you. Sorry about that, Rick. Rick Hermans, Golden Doif. You're, you're the family of the Doif. Yes, we, uh, we issue the Doif weekly magazine in Belgium. The only weekly magazine in Belgium now. It's existing from 1888 already. We didn't have it that long. <laughs> My father started mid-80s with it, uh, he died last year, and my sister and myself took over. And, and it's a paper that runs, what did you say, 48 weeks? 48 weeks a year. 48 weeks yes. a year. How many writers do you guys have? Uh, we have like 40 or 50 writers. Some write only one or two articles a year, some write uh, two articles every week. So, so, and it's it's constantly. Uh, and what are some of the articles like? What's some of the stuff that goes in there? It's not just about auctions and selling no, no, pigeons. No, no, no. We uh, ma mainly we make reports of uh, pigeon lofts. Like in the summer, every national winner in Belgium, we make a report. In the winter, we make the reports of all first national champions of other lofts that raise good. Mainly out of uh, Belgium. Uh, we also have some uh, Dutch uh, writers. We also have every now and then a good Dutch loft in the, in the magazine. Uh, we also have some weekly uh, writers like Ad Scharlakens. Uh, he writes, uh, he writes uh, an article every week. Uh, last few years, Willem de Bruyne every week writes his article. Well, so a lot, lot of different stuff. Uh, a gentleman, I think he's from Kuwait, Mohammed. I can't pronounce the last name. He says, thanks, you are with a legend. So you're the legend, man. <laughs> and you guys see the logo there, Dedoif. I, I posted it up. Uh, again, it, it's, it's very nice to see someone keeping a paper going for people that are, are, like to have something in their hands and not everything mm -hmm. online or not watching videos. A lot of work you got to put into it. Uh, it's a lot of work, but okay, it's nice to do. We are the only pigeon in, uh, weekly in Belgium. We try to keep it as long as possible. My father was really passionate about writing. He also wrote a few books. I'm not that good. I will not write any books, but as long as we can do, we will keep up the dive uh, in Belgium and, and we'll try it because we have a lot of, not a lot of subscribers, but I think in maybe at least 20 or 25 different countries. So, and that goes to all those countries. It goes out every week. Yes, 48 times a year. And guys, if you're wondering, if you are in uh, Belgium, I think Belgium and Holland, it's, it's around 95 euros for, it, for, a, yeah. for a full year. Yeah. And you get it every week. Every week that yeah. it goes out, you yeah. will get it. Uh, if you're international, it's anywhere from 130 euros to 190. 190. So, again, I think very, very reasonable for what you get. And... and what I thought was real neat was you yourself, you and your, your, your team, your, your family, mm -hmm. right? You guys read every article that goes in. Yeah. You proofread it. You make sure that it's, it's yeah, proper that's and, decent and people uh, aren't fighting and, and yeah. going crazy. And for the, especially for the subscribers that live further away, we make the magazine on Monday so we can have the actual races from the weekend mm -hmm. we print on tuesday morning we send out tuesday uh, afternoon tuesday night in belgium the people receive it on wednesday in holland the people receive it on thursday but every tuesday afternoon we have the magazine in full color on our website okay and when you're a subscriber with a license number you can log in 
you can read the newspaper online already on Tuesday. You can copy the text and paste it in Google Translate. So it can translate for you. So people, you don't have to worry. It's not, not overly difficult. Uh, I think very, very well done. Very smart that you did all that. And you make it licensed so people got to pay to get in. Because I mean, yeah. shit, no one should get something like that for free. That's a lot of work. Um, and of course, in the magazine, you read a lot of different lofts also as you only find on the internet, the commercial lofts. Ah, now here's a question. In your magazine, if someone wants to advertise, can you do that? Uh, we have advertisements for pigeon food or for uh, products, mm -hmm. but actually also like uh, Herbots uh, every now and then puts an advertisement for selling pi the, the pigeons sold on his website. But an article about a loft, we never accept money. We, uh, you have to deserve it by the results and not by the money. Okay, so, so you, you can pay to put an advert. So if a one loft race wanted to put an advertisement yeah, that's in, no problem. They, they can buy a page yeah, uh -huh. and there's no problem. No. So there, guys, you can even advertise in it. Um, but your family's still even more than just the paper because you vote, you vote, well, your family is into auction as well. Yeah, you guys, we we have the Golden Ten auction every year. We organize uh, the only auction every year from Willem de Bruin. Every now and then we have another auction, maybe small, maybe bigger one. Like a few weeks ago, we had the Bruggeman auction, all his Barcelona pigeons. And yeah, besides, we, uh, I race pigeons myself. So that's the three main things I do, race pigeons, uh, be a broker and a news uh, editor. So a lot, of, a lot of pigeon jobs. Yeah, it's, uh, but of course, it's, if, if you can make a, a profession of your hobby, you never have to really work. No, it's pigeons all the time. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I get it. Uh, we, I was at the Golden, uh, the Golden Doi Fair yes. uh -huh. on the weekend. Fantastic job that you, you and your family put on. You keep everything organized. I seen in the, uh, at the st it was going great, everything good. You had a, even, I think, a technical difficulty with the screen or something. Yeah. It didn't stop you. You plowed right through it, got the auction done. Everyone was happy. You could see the good life in the room. Bids were coming, but everyone stayed calm. Birds looked fantastic. Now for these, that auction that we just went to at the Golden Doif, how are the birds, how do you select them for that sale? How is that done? Uh, of course, the Golden Doif is a competition for Belgium, Holland, the Netherlands, and also for those countries for the international long distance. We have a special competition. Of course, the winners from each category in Holland, Belgium, Germany, we ask to donate a pigeon to be able to uh, finance the party. Okay. Uh, and besides, we have some uh, friends of the dive who donate the pigeon. Every year we, uh, we have between 40 and 50 pigeons to cover the expenses for the party. And those pigeons raise the money for the event. Yes. And again, you guys have beautiful trophies. Uh, the display is, 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 and that those pigeons all raise that up, that hall and everything. That's what that's yeah, for. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an important thing. So basically the pigeons are given back to, the, to, the, to what is going on. Yeah. A another thing I thought it was is great. I, I looked at the trophies and, and you guys just don't do regular trophies. They're high end. They're heavy duty. They're beautiful. They're they're little pieces of works of art. They're not cheap because we talked about it. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to discuss prices. Yeah, it's okay because <laughs> we publish it. It's uh, the prizes are worth between thirty five and forty thousand euro each year for the trophies. Yeah, and then we don't talk about the Japanese dolls that the Japanese group brings over and so. Yeah, and now and this was another question. I was going to get into this. What are with these Japanese dolls? And uh, the winner in the competition, since long, long time, uh, Champion Trade, our partner in Japan. Okay. They bring every year a doll for each winner. And they're really, uh, people really like it and like to win such a special Geisha doll. Well, I I'll tell you, I was in Germany. I went to visit Marco Mattis. He had his doll there. Yeah. He was... Uh -huh. He was like very proud of like, it, and it's, it's funny because I say, well, where does this doll come from? What does this mean? But it's just something that you've grown. Yeah, especially and, from Japan. And, and it's been going for 10 years? Mm, already, I think for 30 years. The doll. Cha Champion trade exists um, 50 years. Okay. The Golden Dive started in 87. My father and Kenichi Yoshihara from Champion Trade, they knew already each other from 
the Olympi Olympiad in Japan in 97. So maybe already from the start. I don't know. My father died last year, so I cannot ask him anymore. <laughs> but already long, long time. Uh, I, you got uh, the Doif market Lear. The Doif is, is a living... Flemish, Flemish word? Yes, Flemish. Yeah, heritage, much respect for the family, Herman's family, for what they do for the sport. So you're getting thumbs up on that one. Uh, again, guys, I've been at this event twice, and both times it, it was phenomenal. The work was second to none. The atmosphere is real good in the room. I, I, if you want to go to a real pigeon event, I, I think this one is. I haven't been to the Golden 10, which we're going to talk about here momentarily. Mm -hmm. Um... But I can't wait to go do that. That will be in November, which I, yeah, I'm going to come uh -huh. back to because I got to. What is the Golden 10? The Golden 10 is the commercial event of the dive. Uh, only with subscriptions, uh, it's not possible to lift. So we have to do something else, do some auctions to, uh, to gain some profit. Uh, we started in 2013. We had uh, the Golden 10, 10. So 10 lofts from Belgium, 10 lofts from Holland with 10 pigeons each. Nowadays it's a little, uh, maybe 9 from Belgium, 11 from Holland or the way around with 8 pigeons. Uh, it's a live auction. We present the pigeons on internet, but there's no bidding on internet. They can only bid on the day itself. Each pigeon is sold individually, one after another, after another and yeah people can join and bid they can come over and handle the pigeons themselves to look to the quality so so it's only a live auction in the yeah, room yeah live auction in the room and of course nowadays the brokers are there they bid for their customers but only there on that place you can bid or of course with a broker via the phone or anything but and that's it and and, and uh all the pigeons bid in the room. Again, you have brokers from all over. Yes. And they go handle the pigeons and bid for people. Yeah. Uh, guys, it's crazy to see, but yeah, the, there's people on phones bidding, 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 and it's huge, huge dollars that you sell some of these birds for. Uh, this year that just passed here uh, at the Golden Doif, what was your highest bird? Uh, I think the highest bird was around, uh, sold for like... 80,000 euro, and then there comes up 20% auction tax on a live auction. So that works 96,000 euro. 96,000. Yeah, and the record in the Golden Dive was like 120, 125,000. And last year we had uh, 119 times 8, so 152 pigeons, and they bring, I think, 1.4 million euro. That's a that, that's congratulations, yeah. eh? <laughs> Only for young birds without any record, but of course it's now the tenth edition we did, and the people know each seller in the auction selects his best pigeons, his nicest looking pigeons, because if it's the best, nobody knows by then, but the best quality uh, and put in the golden ten because they know the pigeons are handled, and and go from there. Now yeah. before we get into Rick's passion of racing. He loves to race. And we're talking only about work. We're going to take you to the loss. We're going to show you. But you have to be patient, Don. You have to be calm and relaxed. Uh, what I was going to ask you again, the selection for the Golden 10, because it's only basically 10 breeders and 10 breeders from each mm -hmm. of the two countries, is that a tricky selection? Or just of, of course it's it just results of course it's a tricky selection because we have one golden 10 with 20 participants and maybe there are 40 or 50 or 120 people who like to participate so yeah how we select them mostly on results and further yeah we cannot have all so we have more the the, the friends of the dive but of course the results are the most important to join yeah, and I will say, guys, the quality of the pigeons at, at all these events that I've been to is very first class. Now, besides all the work, you like pleasure. You like pigeon racing. Interesting. Yes. Uh -huh. You are from the Netherlands. Yes. And you now here live in Belgium. Yes, correct. You raced in... Oh, Manila. you know what? Hold on. Let's get back a little bit. Your father's pigeon flyer. Yes. Okay. You learned, I take it, from, from your father. Yes, of course. 
Tell me your story. When did you start getting into pigeons? I started getting into pigeons in 95 and uh, when my dream to become a vet uh, was over because I didn't do the science too well in school. Then I switched to economy. My father already was in the pigeon business in the auctions. I helped him. Uh, so then I switched. He told me, yeah, if you like to do in the business, you have to start raising pigeons. So in 95, I went a week to Dirk Lakens and Chostonay. They taught me how to handle a pigeon and everything. <laughs> so then I started racing pigeons myself. In 97, I already won the first national ace pigeon young birds we have to better. 99, I had second, seventh, eighth national ace pigeon young birds. In Holland. In Holland. In Holland, guys. Yes. Now listen, he's done this all in Holland. And then... I went to school. I only raised young birds. Then I met my wife. We were looking for a house, but in Holland the house price is much higher as in Belgium. So uh, the dive office was in Antwerp. I lived in the south of Holland in Eindhoven. We were looking a house between Eindhoven and Antwerp. We came in Belgium. Uh, we moved to Belgium and I started racing pigeons in Belgium. So you start racing pigeons now yeah. in Belgium. Uh -huh. How did you do? Because wait, uh, people say, oh... The Dutch people can't race like the Belgians, or the Belgians yeah. can't race back and forth. You moved that, over here, how'd you do? That was the first thing the people told me. Oh, now you come in Belgium, it will be a little bit more difficult as in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, in the first year in 2006 in the club, I became the champion with the Young Birds. Uh, I had good results on the national races. On the four national races, each race I started in the top 100 national. With the yearlings the year after on Bush. I was the first loft in Belgium to clock uh, three or four birds in the top 100 national and it developed and I got good results with uh, ending in first national Bourges in 2011 with Cowgirl, pigeon that was sent out to the Olympiad just in January before so I kept her racing and she won national Bourges afterwards. So, so again, uh, you got results. You can show maybe yeah. the photo of Cowgirl. It's over there. I, it's I will show it. And, and you did it on both sides. Two different countries. There's Cowgirl. They're beautiful <laughs> eye. What do you think about eye sign? Do you believe in it? Uh, I believe in good pigeons. I never look to uh, the eye signs. Cowgirl was not the most beautiful pigeon. But she became better and better. And she also became a good breeder. So... Friendship, what a nice, uh, what a nice eye on this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, your friend from the UK, a Feathers Elite breeder, John Gladwin. Yeah. He says, hey, how's it going, Rick? <laughs> yeah, nice. You know, I'm sorry, John, you was not with the Golden Dive this year, but you had another celebration. But you will be back next year if the Golden Dive Championship is for England again as an ex-winner. Yeah, and, and uh, John, he was the one that brought me last year. Uh, thanks, John. Always glad to have you on. So the, what people now will ask is, what's the base bloodlines of your family? Uh, my family goes back to when I started Pigeons, 95. 96, we had a hand direct Johnson. 98, we had the Arling Donderstein. He's a son of Donderstein. Donderstein is a son of Cannibal Dirk van Dijk and a full brother of Golden Lady Koopman. Excuse me. That's the main pair. It bred in three generations already over 100 winners and then I stopped counting. Then after the Janssen hen uh, stopped putting eggs, we pair the Jarling Donderstein with a hen of Verkerk. From this pair we bred uh, Athena. Athena as a young bird won two times uh, top national. Athena as a yearling also won two times national uh, top 30. And also first Dudan in Union Antwerp of 5,000 pigeons. And that's one of my basic pigeons from the last 10 years together with Propre. Propre is again a grandson of Jarling Janssen pair with a hen of Eddie Janssen also from the line of Cannibal. Well, of course, we added some Fineke 5000, some Case Bozoa, uh, some Verkerk, some Koopman. Uh, I'm really good with pigeons of Danny van Dijk, uh, my neighbor. But Danny, his main pigeon, the basic breeder, the father of Canon, is also son of Propre. So it's partly my own bloodline again. Well, 
guys, the quality of the pigeons that I've seen, and you're going to see here momentarily, very nice, very athletic pigeons, very strong, buoyant, super soft feathers, beautiful eye sign. Uh, just you can see the quality. Sam Thiemann says, that's a legend right there. Both Rick and his father are well respected. And that's why, Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions, that's why we do this, guys. We go the distance. We want to introduce you to the very, very best. That's why we're here. I've heard nothing about positivity about Rick and your family. I've heard it. I was at your event. Super. I met your sister. She took a picture. It, very, very nice. Uh, and, and again, you can see here the class uh, of the people that we are with, second to none. Did you want to show us some pigeons? Yeah, no problem. You want to take a quick look? Okay. Guys, you're going to see an individual breeding loft that uh, you're going to enjoy. So this is just the, the single pens. We uh, started breeding here three years ago. Okay. Uh, I thought everything in my mind myself, but I had someone building it for me because <laughs> I cannot build anything. Okay. Uh, we put eight boxes here. Uh, the upstairs box are mostly empty. Sometimes we use them for one round for pumpers or when we buy a pigeon and the owner likes uh, to have a pair of eggs of it. Beautiful. So each two boxes um, have one aviary, so okay. they can go out in the aviary, they can fly a little bit. It's not there stuck in a small box all day. So basically, this aviary right in here, guys, and you see the size of it, and I'll just go back. Those, those two pair can use it. You, yeah, you, one by one, of course, not together because they will fight. Yeah, one by one. But one by one, they go in the aviary. And I mean, it's it's a beautiful, nice section. Uh, you know, I could tell when I handled these pigeons, normally when pigeons are in tight individual boxes, they kind of get gassy and bloaty. No, all the ones you could feel, they're getting a, a, a lot of nice exercise. Did you want to just talk about... Uh, uh, I'll, sh I'll take him, I'll show you. Guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. This is Chucky. Chucky is from 2018. As a young bird, he was already fourth national ace pigeon on the small middle distance. And then I also raised him after the, uh, in the last races of the season, two weeks in a row, on almost 500 kilometers and to, to end national Chateau. He won first of 1500, third of 1500 to be the national ace, fourth national ace pigeon. On Chateau, he won the first in the club and the 45 national. And then as a yearling, he was uh, on Bourges, he started with the eight national. And a few weeks later on Isodun, he won the first national yearlings of 11,000 pigeons. And he was also the fastest of 18 or 19,000 pigeons. <laughs> So when you have a pigeon like that, guys, remember, that's why he's got the individual breeding pen. Uh, and how, Good pigeon. How would you describe him in your hands? Mm, he's medium, small size. Uh, he has nice soft feathers. He has good muscles. And, yeah, I like him. Most people who see him like him. He's very nice, guys. I handled him. Trust me. He's everything and more. Uh, worth the trip to come here just to handle this one. Uh, and how many rounds out of him will you take? Uh, to race, I will have probably two pairs, two but pairs. We, we don't do much of bull breeding or how you call it in English, yeah, I don't stud know. Breeding. Stud breeding. We just leave them as natural as possible mostly. That's it. It's, this is a good cock. Most of my pigeons are good hens, so it's very hard for hens to put them uh, the eggs every time. And yeah, I, I, so, so, so these pairs basically raise everything themselves. Yeah, we from him we put the eggs one time, Switch. and we will do again one time when the def different hen. And but the hens mostly raise uh, their own pigeons. But with the best hens, I try to only let them raise normally one pigeon instead of two. Okay, and these pigeons that you have here. What do they specialize? Where's the distance real good for your family of pigeons? I like, I prefer the national racing with uh, the great middle distance, they call it. It's for me 500 to 600 kilometers, so 300 to four, 380 miles. 
Uh, I have a small racing team, so I focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, my father, he lived in the Netherlands. He raced the same pigeons up to uh, 400 and a bit miles. Right. Uh, in, in all these pigeons here, which is your maybe your favorite? Oh, it's hard to say. Come on, uh, you, gotta have, you gotta have a pair here. What's your favorite pair, guys? Come on, Rick. Yeah, I, I have a pair over here. It's from a brother of the First National, uh, Bush, with the daughter of the First National Chateau. Both raced in my own loft. Uh, the last two years they gave my best young bird. So that's, but my favorite pigeon. The pigeon maybe, you, won't, you won't let go. Uh, my national winners, I won. <laughs> Any good pigeon, I never will let go. No. I think if you start selling the good pigeons, your quality will go down and your results will go down. Okay, when you look at bringing pigeons in to add, mm -hmm. what are you looking for? Um, mostly to the results. So um, nowadays, the real good ones are mostly unaffordable. <laughs> uh, but I try to buy brother, sister, children from good pigeons. Right. And the Golden 10, we talked about it before. I buy many good pigeons already. So the father of Chucky is from Case Bozoa, was bought in the Golden 10. The father of Nikai, first national bush, was from Koopman, was bought in the Golden 10. I, have the, I had the second national ace pigeon, Youngbirds, in 2019. The father was from Jan Hoymans, bought in the Golden 10. So that auction has been pretty good to you. <laughs> yeah, but it proves also that people bring quality over there. Oh, 100%. And that's what you really want. Yeah. So, guys, you can bid in, in the confidence. Uh, again, you're going to pay, but you're getting hand-selected at the highest level. Yeah, that's true. And, 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 you know, what is so great is, and I tell you this, if you're going to go to the Golden Ten or the Golden Doif, make a trip and go and see it. Go and experience it. Handle how many... World-class fanciers are in that building on, on, on a night. Uh, well, the Golden Ten, we have 20 fanciers. Uh, in the night, we have a friendship dinner uh, with around 100, 120 people. More famous fanciers will join ex even if they don't sell there. Yeah. The but in the Golden Ten, we have, it's hard to say, I don't know. Some people say 1,000, some people say 2,000 people. I think it's somewhere in between, like... 1500 but most of the fanciers from belgium holland germany are there many famous ones the, i don't yeah. dare to put a number on it it's, but you literally anybody you bump into yeah knows their way around the pigeon uh -huh. loft Ag agreed um what else can we see can you you want to show us a yeah i'll show you the national winners no problem thank you uh, i'll show also this hand mm -hmm. This hen maybe is one of my favorites. It's 2015. It's a really beautiful hen in my eyes. Uh, she's the mother of Chucky, you just seen. Yes. Um, she's grandmother of really different good people, uh, pigeon, sorry, like uh, Fort National Ace Pigeon, First Provincial, Third National La Souterraine. But she's direct from the two basic pigeons, Propera and Athena. So that makes it for me even more special. What do you prefer, purchasing hens or cocks? Um, it's a little bit equal. Most of my good pigeons are hens, so maybe a little early, uh, quicker, I will buy a cock as a hen. And, and you find, in your own racing, do you find your hens outdo your cocks? Um, mostly they do. I have like, uh, if I have to put a number on it, I think 80% good hens and 20% good cocks. But of course, if you only raise hens, you exclude cocks in, in the end. I think you don't have any good cocks anymore. Like Chucky is a cock. I have over there another cock. Uh, he was eight national ace pigeon. So sometimes also the cocks race really well. Right. So you like to play them. You play them all. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very, very nice. You see the quality, guys. You see it right here. Super nice. What else can we see? Rick, come on. Mm -hmm. uh, what is this? Uh, Doyman Market Lear says the room is probably too much isolated to have a fluent live stream. Oh, maybe, guys. It's okay. It's all about the rebroadcast. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, I'll show you again, guys. Everything is uploaded onto the internet, and you will see it. 
We're going to sneak outside momentarily. <laughs> this is a cock from Gerard Koopman. It goes back uh, inbreeding to his old lines of Kleine Dirk, Chantil Golden Lady. Like I told the cannibal, uh, the brother of Golden Lady is one of my basic pigeons, so we look also to get that strain a little bit back. Uh, he became father of Nikai, first national bush. He became father of Bia, a hen five times top 100 national. He became grandfather of many good pigeons and also bought in the Golden 10. So, <laughs> well, it's working for you. The auction, uh -huh. guys, 